Hey guys, welcome to another video for Anatomy and Physiology. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the recent injury that Brian Ortega um, suffered at uh, the latest UFC main event. Now, uh, this stuck out to me because, well, you know, as you know, I'm kind of using these injuries that occur as an excuse to talk about anatomical features of the body because you guys just know that I'm, I love anatomy and physiology. And this particular injury really fascinated me for a couple of reasons. One, because, um, well, the, you know, the physics involved in it and, and the fact that I've experienced something somewhat similar to this um, in, in the sense of, you know, suffering um, a, a massive blow to the face. Now, I got a massive blow to the face with a baseball, though, and I got hit right in the face. And I actually broke these two nasal bones. And so I was lucky I didn't break anything else. And, you know, I had the two, you know, when, when these bones break, you, you bust a lot of blood vessels. And I actually had nerve damage, my nasal nerves. Now, this is actually the cartilage that I'm looking at, but the nerves that kind of run down the nasal, uh, the nasal cavity. And for a couple of years, my nose was, it just always felt like it was burning, like on the inside, it was really itchy. And it took a couple of years for those nerves to heal. But in any case, going back to Brian Ortega's injury, he actually suffered what's called a blowout fracture. Now, a blowout fracture involves the base, the floor of the orbital bone uh, that actually fractures. This is called the maxilla. So let me quickly talk about the bones that make up the orbital uh, cavity uh, that, that protects the eye. It protects the, of course, the eye, and it also protects uh, the extri extrinsic muscles of the eye that uh, control movement. And one of the things that's dangerous about an uh, eye blowout is, as I mentioned before, that it's the maxilla. It's the floor of the, of the, or of the orbital cavity. And depending on the severity of the damage, you can actually have pretty severe damage to these muscles. This one, for example, is the inferior rectus. And when this muscle contracts, so kind of like, you know, think in, think in physics terms when, you know, a pulley. So when you pull, when this muscle contracts or shortens, it's going to pull the eye down. So he's going to look down. And then, of course, you also have the inferior or oblique. So when this one contracts, you're, you're kind of looking um, to, to the outside. You're looking laterally. Okay. Now, so let's talk about the orbital cavity, okay? So we have six bones. On the base, the floor, you have the maxilla. And then the superior, the roof, you have the frontal. Okay, and then making our way medially here, we have the lacrimal gland, or not, not the gland, sorry, but the lacrimal bone, the plate. You have the ethmoid, and then behind that, you have what's called the sphenoid bone. Okay, that makes the the posterior wall of the cavity, and then the lateral the lateral aspect of it is the zygomatic arch. <laughs> Sorry, the zygomatic uh, bone. The zygomatic arch is right here. Okay, so this one can break too. In fact, this one more frequently breaks than even the maxilla. But although the maxilla, one of the interesting features about this bone that um, makes it a s somewhat frequent um, broken bone, depending on how you get hit, most people will get hit on the protuberance of the zygomatic and, and you'll fracture that one. But this one, when this one breaks, th the way that he got hit, uh, the floor, okay, this part of the bone right here, the, of the maxilla, is actually one of the more thinner uh, bones in the orbital cavity. So it's the, if, if you take a direct hit, kind of in a downward pressure, that bone, if you get hit hard enough, and the compression... The compression, uh, compression pressure, if it's big enough, it will actually cause that bone to buckle, to bend, or to break, and that's when you have that uh, that what's called the uh, orbital blowout, a blowout fracture. Okay, and it's specifically referring to this floor. Now, sometimes the uh, blowout fracture will also invi involve the medial lacrimal gland, or even you know more dangerously the ethmoid because now you're talking about bones that are deep inside the cavity and you know you just essentially have to just let those bones heal you can't do too much about them now again depending on the severity if you know like if you're in a car accident of course you're, you know you're gonna you're gonna suffer more 
uh, compressive forces in a car accident or being hit in the, um, you know, with a bat, for example, or like a 100 mile per hour fastball, depending on how, how bad the deformity is or if it's causing damage to the muscles, as we mentioned before, or the nerves, okay? So you have the optic nerve back here. Depending on how severe this is, and you will need to have surgery done, but by and large, typically you won't need to, and it can it will just heal on its own, and that's kind of what, um, as far as I know, the last I've heard, what Brian Ortega is facing, he can, he could be up and running. You know, it, it'll just take a couple of days for the blood to drain out, and then you'll look somewhat normal, but you'll still have a, a fracture, but he can miss up to six weeks or up to um, a year and a half, even eighteen months. So it all really depends on how severe it is and, you know, how his muscles and nerves heal on that um, and whether he needs surgery. Ultimately, he's going to have to see an optom um, ophthalmologist and um, and they're going to have to assess his injury and, and give him medical clearance to go back and train because you definitely don't want to go back too early and get punched right there and refracture that. Okay. Well, that does it for um, this particular video. I want to thank you for joining me, and I'll catch you on the next one.